Every day, people everywhere are using software. But how do we develop software? How does it go from an idea to a finished product? Hello, welcome to another video. This is Dreamasium and I'm Tony. All software projects start out with an idea. There has to be a meeting, there has to be some discussions and deciding on what is going to happen. People involved in the meeting are going to be the stakeholders. The stakeholders are going to be anybody that has an interest in the development of the software. This will include the software developers, not just the people with the cash. Once an agreement has been made, then the project can start. I'm not going to go into massive detail about every single stage or every different type of development process. I am going to point out that agile development doesn't need large amounts of documentation and it has the flexibility to be able to cope with change in the requirements for the software. First, let's look at something that's not considered agile and this will give us a good understanding uh, of, of where to move on from. First, let's have a look at what is not agile. The waterfall method is a, an example of a, uh, a predictive method, and it's not very agile at all, and I'm going to show you why. We start here, um, with the requirements specification. Now that takes like meetings, you meet with people, you meet with the client, the customers, the stakeholders, and you discuss exactly what the uh, um, app uh, piece of software is, is required to do. You're going to set out things like uh, user cases and all sorts of other stuff. Once that's done and in waterfall method, this here is going to be quite heavy documentation because you're not going to come back to it. So you want to get it right first time. And then you move on to the next stage, which is developing a conceptual model. So you're going, you're going to think about the domain and you're going to build a, a conceptual model from the domain. You then move on to the next stage, which is developing dynamic models. So like sequence diagrams. And this, uh, um, th this is obviously quite important for the coding, but already you can start to see why it's called a waterfall method, because you start at, at one point and then you move down and you move down like it's water flowing down a waterfall. And then you've got a next stage. So you've got developing uh, the user interface. That's going to have to be built. And then you move on to uh, the uh, detailed design and implementation. So like, you know, more or less the final product. And then you move on to testing it to make sure that it's okay. And then once you've tested it, if there is any maintenance that needs to be done, then you would do the maintenance. Now, this is, this is a very sequential and rigid way of looking at things because you have to get this right right at the beginning so there's there's huge amounts of documentation it's very heavy on documentation um then you're going to spend a lot of time on these conceptual models and you haven't even like you know really started any any code yet <clears throat> because you're thinking about the whole program the whole piece of software the whole app um you know developing uh, uh these diagrams and then you get to uh, uh thinking about the uh the interface how, how the person is going to interact with perhaps like a, a storage system perhaps that's being uh, a part of the system so you might have like a 
a database on a server somewhere and that is connected to um, somebody's computer and they send information to it through the interface which is like the bit they're going to interface with on their computer <clears throat> but anyhow um, without going going to astray this detailed design and implementation you're going to have a lot of coding there <laughs> and then there's testing now this part is kind of important here because like, you know, what what if you if you've waited until here to, to do all of the testing, you've practically built the whole thing, or you have built the whole thing before you start before you start doing any tests. And then you have to do the maintenance. Now that's that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's it's a lot of hard work. What if you find out that there's a major problem and you have to start all over again and you have to rewrite you have to rewrite this part because there's some something that that you didn't see also what happens if you get through you get through this stage you get through this stage you get through this stage and you get into this stage and by the time you get here your your app is now um obsolete because it's taken too long to develop um, or your client has um, run out of, of cash. What happens is then your, your, your client's got, got nothing and you've wasted your time building something that's never really going to be used. So those are the problems with the waterfall method. So the waterfall method is, is not agile. No, it's not. It's not agile. We move on to the iterative method, which is an adaptive method. We uh, have a look at this and, and we can think, well, it looks pretty much the same, except for um, maintenance has moved uh, and it's now over here and we have this uh, review thing going on. So what happens is like, you know, we go through this in iterations and the first iteration, you might look at the, uh, the core of the app and one or two uh, chunks that you might decide to develop rather than developing the whole thing. So we look at this and we still like need to know what needs to be in there. We develop some conceptual models, um, some dynamic models. Uh, there might be a user interface, how we got to interact with this particular part of the program that we're developing design and implementation testing and then we get to the, go, go over to a uh, review here and at this point we review and we look and see if anything needs to change it, what, what, is there anything like you know wrong with any of these uh, uh, stages um, mainly here and then we can go back to the beginning and we pull some more documents so some more use cases that we then um, set about solving so uh, another part of the system that we've decided to solve so that would be iteration two and we might have um, some other chunk and then it goes for it again we get to the testing we go to uh, review, we see uh, about any maintenance, and then we come back up to here, and we start um, the, the third iteration of the program. And this can keep continuing until either you have finished the program or uh, uh, the, the clients run out of money. But if they do run out of money, you've got something to give them. If they need to release something, you've got something that you can release. 
So the the main difference is that it's it's not you're not going to be building, uh, you're not going to be starting at this point and then moving here and here is like you know the end. What you're doing is you're going around and then you go around again and then you go around again, a bit like um, a for loop. So in that respect, this is uh, very much like a for loop, except for this is about the design and the development of the uh, um, piece of software. It's, well, it's more the development than the, the design. In this part of the video, um, I'm going to use a post from Tim Dennis, who has very kindly uh, given me permission to use this post in this video. And the reason why I think this post is important is because it has some important concepts. It's just they're a little bit confused. So I'm going to explain and we're going to, to clear up this confusion. OK, so Agile Waterfall is a contradiction in terms. Agile is a development process and Waterfall is a development process, but Waterfall is not a part of an Agile development process. Iteration uh, as, as a data structure. Uh, no, iteration is explained very well down here as to what iteration is, this, this part here. So uh, iteration now is looping like while loops, for loops, do loops. Yes, that, that's right. They, they go through iterations. One iteration is one cycle for a for loop. Two cycles for a for, for loop is going to be two iterations. Data structures, uh, data structures are, are things like stacks and lists. They're, they're not agile, they're, they're not iteration, they're, they're something else. Here, where Agile can be a block of instructions executed in a linear manner, that's from top to bottom, that's sequential. And I'm going to go over sequential selection and iteration in the next part of this video to explain it. Um, waterfall, according to me, is a situation where there are two alternatives. That's selection. OK, so we've got uh, um, that's where the confusion is come about here. So the main point here is that Agile is a development process and it's designed to be very flexible. And that means that it can change to demands that are, are, are put upon us from the, uh, the, the clients. Waterfall is an outdated uh, development process. So let's get on to the next part of the video, which is about iteration, selection and sequential. All algorithms have these three components to them, or a combination of. So sequential, you're going to have like one line of code, and then that, then the next line of code is read, and then the next line, and then the next line, and it just goes down in this very sequential fashion. That's why it's called sequential. When we have selection, we have like true or false. <clears throat> And you might have a condition like, so if five is greater than B, then print hello world, for instance. Okay, so you, you could have like a series of if blocks and then you have a piece of code and then you might have another one and a piece of code, you might have an if and else block and that's going to have its own piece of code. And uh, what happens is uh, the system looks at all of the conditions of these and then selects the one that is appropriate. When we get to iteration, then um, yes, of course, we're going to have for loops, while loops, and other kinds of loops. You know, so the, these uh, uh, these are going to keep going while some condition is true. So if, if we have like you know while some condition is is true, it's going to keep on running that code until that condition is false, um, and with for. Um, you might go through it, say, 10 times, and then it stops them. So selection, iteration, 
and sequential are to do with algorithms but there are iterative processes that go on within software development. I'm not going to go over all of the different processes but I am going to mention a couple. So we have Scrum and XP. Now if you're interested in these subjects then I highly recommend that you look up Scrum and XP and that you also go over the Agile Manifesto. Agile development is a process that puts individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan, as long as those things are in the interest of the development of the software. This video is really aimed at introducing you to the idea that there is a development process and it is worthwhile remembering. I've just given you a, a basic idea that it exists and I haven't got into it in any real detail. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I really hope that you liked this video. If you did, come and check out my other videos.